Mark, it, it feels like the first time, really, that Southgate has had to face criticism, doesn't it, like this? When he came in, there was this idea that he would reconnect the fans and the players. And, you know, we've all got really excited during the last few major tournaments. Um, this time, it, it does feel different, doesn't it? You're, you're spot on. I think it's, it's funny, when Gareth Southgate came into the job, there was no expectation, there was no connection to the fan base. I don't think people were really that excited about no. watching England. And suddenly, through what they did on the pitch and what they said off the pitch, yeah. they built all these bridges and suddenly there was this connection and a feel-good factor around the country again. And they did again. well. <laughs> and they did well. Look at what they achieved uh, in the World Cup in, in 2018 yeah. and, and probably should have got to the final. They were... Super unlucky on that occasion. Obviously, they got to the final in, in the Euro 2020, were magnificent in what they did. And the way the players handled themselves off the pitch as yeah. well, the things they stood up for, the way they spoke about kind of political and, and, and sociable issues. Mm. And they really kind of just... And they looked like they enjoyed playing for England, which completely. hasn't always been the case over the last few years. Yeah. And How do we find ourselves here then? <laughs> because the expectation changes. Yeah. And that's the problem. You know, you get to the semi-final of the World Cup, you get to the final of the Euros, and suddenly there is this expectation. You look at the, the golden generation of players, we talk about it, the fans are talking about it. You know, Harry Kane just had an incredible season for Bayern Munich. Phil Foden, you know, player of the Premier League. Jude Bellingham, the best player in La Liga. Mm. Declan Rice, a £100 million player that's gone into Arsenal and been an instrumental part of their success this season, although they didn't win any silverware. And when you put all those players together, there's an expectation that this can be our year. It's finally it going to come home. Yeah, it still could but then be. you look at the reaction <laughs> off the back of that Denmark game. Not good enough. It's baffling and concerning. Need more intensity and direction. England were really poor. That's the likes of Gary Lineker, Alan Shearer, yeah. Rio Ferdinand. And you can see here from what's being said in the papers, you know, England in deep trouble, sleeping lions, tame old story. Yeah. And then the eye, surely it doesn't have to be like that. Uh, should, we, should we add an Alex Aljo quote to, oh to these? What was my quote? What's your quote? I don't know. Give oh, us okay, one you, now. Okay, sorry, I thought I said something earlier. Why <laughs> well, I think they're saving the best for last. Saving the best for last? Yeah, they're keeping last. cards close to, to chess right now. And Gail Davis? Oh, it's just been underwhelming. It's underwhelming. the hope that kills you. Isn't it? I think when the squad got announced, we were so excited to see that list of players. And you see some of the big players that miss out and you think, right, this is going to be a change in mindset. It's going to be really positive. We're going to go for it. And then, and then you watch the Denmark game. Yeah, but one thing about Gareth Southgate is he's always been really solid defensively, mm. built from the back. He's always played two pivots, yep. two players to shield the back four. We know that defensively that's our weakest area. He's obviously missing Calvin Phillips, which is something he's admitted to as well, because that allows Declan Rice to be a little bit more free. So Declan's playing in a slightly different role to perhaps what he's best mm. at. And of course, what Gareth Southgate has done, and I, and I do real, really feel sorry for him here, because he's, he's picked all of England's best players. And sometimes, and I think that might be what we're seeing now, it's not necessarily the right thing to do because the balance of the team yeah. doesn't look quite right because you've got people that are playing in positions that perhaps aren't their natural positions. But Gareth Southgate, if he leaves Phil Foden or Jude Bellingham or Bukayo Saka or Harry Kane on the bench and they don't play well, he's going to get criticised for that. So he puts them in the team and he still gets criticism. And that's one of the difficult things. And I think he's trying to almost do the right thing, but all second guess what is going to work and what doesn't work. It's, it's an unenviable position. Mm, yeah. He is, whatever he does, he's going to be criticised unless they win 5-0 every week. But I still think they have to build slowly. I think you, based on what you've seen from Harry Kane and Declan Rice, there's a real togetherness within that group. Yeah, they've there's they've a belief. been very bullish, haven't they? They haven't week? lost a game. Yes. They've already qualified. She's Miss Positive over here, isn't <laughs> she? Full guy. Declan Rice would give you a big tick this morning because that's what he's calling for, isn't it? A bit of positivity. But that's what we need, positivity in the media. Let's get behind the boys let's be excited about what they can achieve and remember like you say they haven't lost a game yet they're still top of the group it's important that they play well tonight put in the right type of performance and put themselves in the best position so that there is that little bounce and spring as we go into the knockout stages yeah absolutely and one player that england will be hoping to keep quiet tonight is slovenia forward benjamin sesco apart from the fact that arsenal wanted him mm. didn't get him what else do we know about him 
He was Arsenal's number one target over the course of this summer and has been continually linked with a move to the Premier League. He's a player with huge potential. He's only 21 years old. Um, he's been monitored by Real Madrid as well. I found myself talking about him in a number of transfer yeah. windows because he is potentially so exciting. He scored seven in his last seven Bundesliga games before the summer. So he was in red hot form ahead of the tournament. He scored 14 goals in 31 Bundesliga games, which is a goal every other game. So he's got really, really good records over in Germany. Um, and I think potentially he could be could be one of those players that could just have a sting in the tail for England. You can see his story in the Bundesliga this season. 31 games, 14 goals, two assists, 109 minutes per goal uh, is pretty handy and 0.82 goals per 90 minutes as well tells you the type of story. But there is a little bit of a doubt over him. He yeah. has started both of um, Slovenia's group games. He's got a little bit of a quad yeah. issue. They think he played why though, don't they? He came off. But like you rightly say, there is a strong chance that he will still start the game tonight because we know how important it is for Slovenia. Two points on the board. They beat England tonight and suddenly the whole dynamic of the group could change.